Hi guys, Suzy Q here, and day three is completed. Let me show you what I did. Okay, day three. Day three in the fish room. And okay, so I've got my lights and wires organized, and I'll show you how I did that. I've got my tanks that I set up from scratch, populated and planted, and I'll show you how I did that. <laughs> Let's take a look. Okay, so I've let some of the tanks settle down for a day, and now I'm gonna try, because these were so inundated with duckweed, I'm gonna try to skim some more off the top with this net. I'm going to try some more tricks like paper towels. Right now I'm just getting the big chunks. So what I did with this angel tape tank, this is the first one that I moved, if you noticed. Oops, didn't mean to scare you guys. This is the first one that I moved. I set up a brand new 20 gallon tank, filled it about to here with water. Oh, hi guys. And I started pulling out their plants. So here's the two big swords that were in the angel tank, the angel baby tank. And some of the decorations, the coconut huts, which I know had beneficial bacteria on them. There's an old sponge filter in here. And then there's an old season sponge filter back there. I made sure that they had the right temperature. When I took the angels out, I acclimated them very, very slowly with this water and that water and then put them in here and this, so now they're in a, the same, hmm, so now they're in this tank without a substrate. I'm really liking my new setup. I like that I can get in here and fiddle. I like to fiddle. Oh, I like to fiddle with my tanks. Very few of them do I just leave alone. Now those up there, I'm gonna need a stool, so I'll probably use this or this step stool I just moved. Yeah, now I'm going to try to see if I can get these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lights on a timer because the rest of the room is on a timer and these that I moved are not. <laughs> so I'm going to see if I can get that fixed. So I'm going to try to figure out what to do with these lights. Right now they're on a timer and it's for that half of the room. And this is the timer. These are all my lights. So I just wish I had labeled everything. Some are lights and some is the extension cord to get to the lights over there. But this side of the room goes on and off on the timer, six hours a day. Very selfish, it's when I'm home. <laughs> and it's got two USBs, four USBs, but I don't need that. I have four outlets here that I could still hook this up to the timer. So this is what I'm going to work on. I can actually turn these on or off. I could turn that off or on, so that's manual. Oh, uh, that's pretty cool. Ooh. I like it. I don't know what the bottom row is. That's a heavy duty cord. It's indoor, outdoor. I gotta see what this goes to. This does not look like a light cord. So what I do is I follow the chain. I'm not gonna bore you with all this. I just wanted you to see my setup that I have. Oh, that's the extension cord for all those lights that are over there. So let's test it. Yep, I just turned off that side of the room. <laughs> oh, I like it. Mikey, he likes it. I think we're going to get this set up. I think I'm going to be able to tie all these in on two power strips into here. That's what my goal is, because I think they're already in two power strips. I just have them willy-nilly. I hope I'm not in over my head moving around my fish room like this. It's so hard. 
Okay, so let me show you what I did with my... These are all lights connected to the timer. These are my timer for my lights on this half of the room. Here are the other lights that are connected to the timer. So now all my lights are on the same timer, which I like that. And I'm gonna come over here to this contraption, which I absolutely love. I can't thank one fish, two fish enough because if I hadn't watched her video, I wouldn't have even known this existed. So this is all heating. This is all the heating. This back here is all my filtration. So most of it's run off of an air pump because I use sponge filters in most of all of them. But I have several hang on the back filters. And that is what I have so far with this spider web of wires. Then I had to go through with the air filtration that's not set up right because I would like to. I was watching Dan's fish room and he's got a lot of people have it, but I watched his video, the closed loop with a, a more powerful air pump, which is what I want to do, because right now this is the air pump that I'm using. So it's like I have to turn this one up, turn this one down, turn this one up, turn this one down, just to make sure that there's bubbles in all the tanks. I don't want to do that anymore. I want to run a closed loop around the top of my, uh, like where a cornice would be, and have air lines drop down to where I need them. That is my goal next. I'm not done with this part. <laughs> so I have that done. I still have these two tanks to go. I'm going to take my platies, my camping fish I showed you before, and put them over here into this 20 long because there's lots of them. And then my this fish, which has my original Mr. Betta, elephant ears, uh, Dumbo ears, whatever, bumblebee gobies, CPDs, in this tank. I'm gonna move on over to the same size tank over here. This has a hang on the back filter that I have never been able to touch since I started. It's, I can't even imagine. Thank goodness it's overgrown with plants and that's probably my real filtration. That hang in the back is probably just water flow. Acts as only water flow. <laughs> I'm going to show, I might revamp over here a little bit. This is where I do my sponges after I boil them, clean them with peroxide, and then they sit in the net soak. And then I have a little shower thing hanging up that has a lot of the stuff that I use, and my baster, test strips, especially now because I'm moving stuff around. I'm, I'm going to run through those like crazy. I'll probably pull out my liquid testers, scrapers, Things like that. I got some more up here. This would be a nice spot for the air pump. Right there. Right? Right up there. And then run run along the top. I think that's perfect what I'll do. And of course I got my pothos everywhere. I love my pothos. These roots are awesome. I'm not gonna mess with this tank. This is a very old tank. I got used and I absolutely love it. And I love this bubbly sound. I kind of miss it in my bedroom. When I was trying to sleep, I was having a hard time. I might have to get a waterfall for my bedroom. All right, let me move those things over and I'll shoot some more video. Okay, I wanted to show you this old bitus I took out of the uh, CPD tank. This has got to be one of my favorite plants. I'm hoping you can see that. Oh, I'm sorry, Dustin's fish tanks a long time ago and I've been trying to find it ever since and I can never find anything of this quality. It is absolutely gorgeous. This is amazing. I think it's also called like African fern. So I'm really hoping it transplants, transplants well. I'm thinking about having a bulbitis only tank. It's just so gorgeous. There is an Anubis attached to the log as well. That was my very first piece of driftwood I ever got. It's almost hollow. 
That's where I was first introduced to tannins, and but that bulbitis is just, for me, it's just breathtaking. I can't get over that. That's what I like. Although I just saw Rachel O'Leary get a big chunk of it. I don't know if it was from an auction or a show she went to, and seems to have do, doing very well. So I'm hoping it's not one of those that, oh, once you move it, it just dies, or even dies back. It's such a slow grower. So now this had tons and tons of horn. I haven't even touched, scratched the surface of the, of the other 10 gallon tank. And I'll show you, even though it's all cloudy. I took all the horn wort out already. So already from that tank, I took all of this out. All of that came out. All this water sprite, took all this water sprite out because that was intermixed with the bulbitis. And I still have all this. I forgot I had that air bubbler in there. So I might just grab that little piece of bulbitis there and keep my new tank of bulbitis tank. Oh, I like that idea. So the bulbitis is one of those that you tie onto a rock or onto a log, it's part of the driftwood. <laughs> you tie onto a, a, you don't plant it because it's got, oh, what's the word I'm looking for, rhizomes. Interesting, there's my auto, there's some CPDs. I am so sad that I'm pulling this apart. Obviously not working on the tank for a year, didn't do any damage to the plants or the fish. All the fish are great. Full bites. Love it. I am done working on it for now. I'm going to bed. These are the original tanks, still where they're supposed to be. So now I've got two little two gallon tanks or three gallon tanks on the bottom where I can get my hands in there and move around and clean them. The last tank I had in there, I, I didn't clean it the whole year it was set up. 20 gallon pea puffers, my 30 gallon, got my little platies in this one. I got my CPDs, Bumblebee Gobi and Mr. Ben in this one. And my sorority still there. Did my Shelly's. Fine. All right. It was exhausting. So I gotta say, it was a lot of work. But it was definitely, definitely worth it. I go super slow. Wait, I gotta show Susan from SLC Aquatics. See my apron? Woohoo! I'm looking around. I'm really liking it now. Well, I liked it before, but I, <laughs> there's a lot of work. I didn't, I didn't realize. Well, thanks for joining me on my makeover, and I really appreciate all the positive comments. Thank you guys, you are awesome.